So when I told people I was interviewing you, uh, I said, so what would you ask them first? And they said, well, all this vitriolic response to your appearance with George and the book, he's got to be really surprised. And I thought, you know, this couldn't possibly surprise you. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. I knew it was coming, and I dreaded it. I was sitting having a cup of coffee with my wife, looking out at our bird feeder last week, and I said, isn't this wonderful? What's coming is going to be awful. But I expected it. And, and how does it feel, and how does your family react to it? I think they prepared for it as well. They've seen a lot of rocks thrown at me, especially over the last two years, and so they're prepared for it as well. But these rocks are hard. Uh, thrown by the President of the United States, calling you a slime ball, says you committed many crimes. Uh, thinks, you know, there are certainly people on cable television who think you should be put in jail, indicted at the least. Yeah, I think the President said I should be put in jail as well. And my reaction, honestly, when I saw that was to shrug, like, and then to stop myself and realize that in that shrug is something dangerous, because I worry everybody shrugs. The President of the United States is saying that private citizens should be in jail. That's not okay. That's not normal. But there's a danger that he's making us numb to that, to an erosion of the rule of law and to independent law enforcement, and that's a bad place to be. And so I'm, I'm a little bit ashamed of my own shrug, and I hope other people will not shrug as well. You didn't say anything, basically, after you were fired. Uh, publicly. Uh, you waited for it to come out in the book. And now you've sparked this, you know, renewed debate about everything that was in the past. All the while, we have this ongoing investigation, which you're a witness to. Mm -hmm. And I assume you've been, you've talked to the special counsel, you've testified, or you're going to testify. You're right in the middle of it. But you didn't say anything before. You waited until the book. Why didn't you say anything before? Because I wanted to say what I need to say in a thoughtful way and in a way that I hope transcends the current administration and the current controversies. Donald Trump is a small part of this book. It covers a lot of stories that I hope illustrate what ethical leadership should be from mistakes I've made and things I've learned. And I thought, I don't want to do it you know, episodically, do it casually. I'm going to be trying to be thoughtful and give people something useful. And so that's what I hope I've done. And yet a lot of people We'll never believe that. You've got Democrats, a lot of Democrats who think you cost Hillary Clinton the election. You've got a lot of Trump supporters who think you should be put in jail uh, and that what you've done uh, by releasing the memos that you took, the notes you took about private conversations with the president is a crime. So you have people who immediately are against you on both sides. Yep. Who are you trying to reach? Really not those folks. I hope, and maybe I'm kidding myself, but I don't think so. There's a great middle in American life that understands the importance of values in our leaders and is too busy to get involved the way the people do at the wings, the far right and the far left. I hope that I can speak to them and say, look, I know you're busy. I know you're trying to raise the kids and get all kinds of things done in your lives. Great, I do the same. But if we don't get off the couch and participate, our politics is dominated by the crazies at the wings. The values of this country are embodied in that great middle of America, and I need those folks to focus. And how do you think that's working out so far? And I know it's just the beginning of the book tour, but obviously you started with a big launch with a big interview with George Stefano. It's hard to tell because people tend to see, people who haven't read the book, seize on things that I don't think fairly represent what I'm trying to communicate, so it's, it's too early to say. A, a lot of people would say, you know, they get what you're trying to do, they, you want to dive deep into your thinking. Uh, sort of go through the machinations of what you went through, trying to be intellectually honest, you said, your words, uh, and yet a lot of people were turned off by your personal characterization of President Trump. And I know you did it for the book, you know, what, what was the scene like inside there? Well, you paid attention to this, this, and this, and this. But the way it came out, a lot of people are saying, and you, look, you saw the front page of the New York Times today, your star, Comey star turn may spoil his carefully cultivated image as someone above the fray. But you got into the fray by talking about his tie and his hand size and the tanning circle goggles around his face. Do you regret that at all? Do you wish you had said something differently? I don't. I, I regret that people appear, maybe even the New York Times reporters, not to have read the book. Because if you read the book, I try to, because when I was typing I could hear my editor's voice in my head saying, bring the reader with you, bring the reader with you. I described President Obama as much skinnier than I expected. I'm not trying to attack President Obama. I describe President Bush, details about him. I tell stories about leaders I dealt with, my own childhood. I try to put rich detail in there. I'm trying to be an author. I'm not trying to make fun of Donald Trump. I mean, as silly as it sounds, I found his hands to be not unusually small. Yeah, that's what the book says. Yeah. But that was in my head. 
And so I think what I'm trying to do as an author is share that with people. And I think the seizing on that is, is really not fair and consistent with the whole book. One of your fiercest critics has been uh, Sean Hannity of Fox News. What was your reaction yesterday when in court on something very different, uh, the hearing into uh, what was raided by the FBI, the organization you used to head, uh, of, of his person, of Michael Cohen, the personal attorney for Donald Trump, about his documents, it was disclosed that he, Hannity, was a client of Cohen's. What was your reaction here? I don't know enough to have a reaction. I saw those headlines. I was running around yesterday. This guy eviscerates things. you every night. You had no reaction? I've actually never watched his show. I know he eviscerates me because I hear it secondhand, but I really didn't because I know enough to know that I often can't know what's going on in an investigation or a case from what I see in the media, as good as the media can be. And so I, I really don't have a reaction. You, you've never seen Sean Hannity mm -mm. on television? No, never. He's going to be very disappointed when you Yeah, I don't want to hurt his that. feelings, but yeah. he's got plenty of other viewers. He doesn't need me. Well, he'll take it out on you even more, perhaps. <laughs> um, get, I want to get into Russia. You looked into Russia's involvement, manipulation of the 2016 election. Uh, it's, it's taken a side path uh, because a lot of people are worried, well, is this going to affect the legitimacy of Donald Trump? That's what the White House is mostly concerned about, or at least it seems to be. But most Americans are worried about Russia in, Russia's involvement. How worried should we be going forward? How much did you see and find? Russia engaged in a widespread, sophisticated attack on our democracy in 2016. They had attacked our democracy routinely going back to the Soviet era. They will be back. They'll be back in 2018. They'll definitely be back in 2020. Every American should care about that. Because again, we can fight with each other as Republicans or Democrats. We all care about the same precious thing, which is our democracy. And so they'll be back. Are we doing enough to protect this country from a future attack? I can only say what I see my former colleagues saying, like the head of NSA, no, is the answer. We're not doing enough. OK. What are you going to do after this is over? What's your next step in your career? I'm going to be a teacher. I was this year at Howard University. I'm going to be next year at my alma mater, William & Mary, teaching about leadership and ethics, and which will be really exciting. I'm going to use the book in my course, and I'm going to buy it for the students. I'm not going to be one of those professors. There you go. I, and and I sign it for them. I too never like, if they do well, I'll sign it for them. Yeah. Uh, if writing can be cathartic, and if you could take back, after writing this book, looking at everything, analyzing it, doing it your own self-examination, if you could take back one thing that you did, would there be such a thing, and what would it be? Well, if I had a magic wand, I, first of all, Hillary Clinton never would have used a personal email server, and Anthony Weiner never would have had a laptop. That would have made my life a whole lot easier because we wouldn't have been involved at all. Right, but a decision you made. I, some small ones. I mean, I made a bunch of mistakes as FBI director, but in those big investigations, only small ones. I screwed up how I presented it. I screwed up how I described it. But in the main, every time we faced a choice, it was either do we choose bad or do we choose worse? And we always try to choose bad and avoid worse, knowing that everybody was going to be mad at us, no matter what we did. And that's freeing in a way. James Comey, good luck to you. Yeah, it's great to be All with right. you. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. Yeah, same, same.